people talk. Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Adam. And welcome to Meeple Talks. This week we've got another one of our Gen Con acquisition videos. This one is Brilliance, well, uh, created by Maxim Tardif, mm -hmm. produced by Sphere Games. So it's a 2017 edition. We've got the special five pound six player version because mm -hmm. it's quite the heavy board. But yeah. they also have a, a four person one I believe they're gonna be working on. They're gonna soon. be coming out with one at some yeah. point in the future, yes. Mm -hmm. So this game has a lot of components. It's all about ants. You have your little ant colony. And yeah. uh, your ants move around and collect things mm -hmm. and bring them back to the hive or whatever hill. A hill, yep. <laughs> These aren't bees, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> so uh, this is a very interesting game. Um, mm -hmm. They've got the little ant uh, figs that are very unique as well. And we'll mm -hmm. tell you all about those right mm -hmm. now. And welcome to the Quiet Forest. So this is where the Brilliance game takes place. Uh, we've got the forest area that is customizable depending on the number of players you've got. You can expand or shrink it. Um, as you notice also with the board, we've got these amazing little figurines here. And so there are three different types of ants. We've got the hunters, the gardeners, as well as the diggers, uh, all shaped a little bit differently from each other. And they've also got these day and night uh, markers that you can flip on and off depending on the cycle and that will become important in just a moment that Adam will explain. Uh, you've got your pheromone tokens as they move around the board you're going to be leaving these as well. Uh, and then the entire board itself is going to represent different areas for uh, insects as well as plants that depending on the type of ant you are you're going to be forging and collecting those. Um, You've also got your enemies, your various different uh, creatures here that are going to attack. These are your predators that may come to play on the board to thwart uh, your well, opponent's efforts. Um, you've also got, you're going to be growing your army of ants because you only start with a few to begin. And how you get more are with these spawning tile cards that you're going to use as one of your actions. Also, as you move along the board, every round we're going to have a spin to indicate which type of ant is going to get a little bit of extra movement. Every individual player, so that's the main board here, every individual player is going to have their own uh, card that's going to represent essentially their own ant hill with different entry ways that you may be unlocking. Uh, you've got your spawning area for your ants that are going to then come into being. You've also got your individual uh, pheromone and uh, digging tiles you're going to use to indicate what you've already uh, accomplished. Uh, your predator token, so as you use them. Uh, you're going to indicate from there which has been tapped. Uh, also, what's the whole point of this gathering? Well, we've all got these types of objective cards depending on the type of ant you are. You will have different objectives that you may need to satisfy, uh, different types uh, to collect, whether they are uh, soil samples, the insects, or the or the different uh, fruit and different victory points that are on them as well. So these are the basic components for the original game. There are variations as well. So in more advanced versions, you may have different species cards. So each individual may have a certain type of skill or advantage that you they use for their own character uh, or for their own species uh, throughout the game. Also another variation too is gonna be all the way over here. Uh, here, we didn't show them yet. These are some of your resources you're going to be collecting. Uh, but you've also got these special cards as well. So you may have a hand of about six, perhaps, uh, to show. And these will maybe be extra skills or actions that you can take depending on the day, uh, whether they are day or night cycles, or even just uh, use any time type of uh, advantages. So you'll have those at your disposal, again, for a variation. And then finally, because we mentioned these day and night cycles a couple of times, you've got your uh, marker to indicate uh, the type of phase that you're in. So that will influence perhaps some types of actions uh, that you can take at certain times. So those are the general components of the game. Okay, and now we move on to how to play the game. So on each round, there will either be a day or a night cycle. And so uh, on any particular cycle, each player will take a turn, and a turn will consist of one action. Um, the different types of actions they can take, number one, they can spawn an ant. So as Stephanie mentioned, you can take a spawn card here and bring out a new ant uh, of any type. Um, an another option that you can take is you can move your ant into the learning center. Learning center allows you to take another one of these uh, of whatever type. 
Um, and these are the cards that can get you the victory points and you'll collect those items. Um, another one of your actions is to move one of the ants. So your ant might be here, you can move him up to three and grab one of these resources and also drop your pheromones which block other players. And um, then you can also use your predator token once per round, flip it to indicate that it's been used and you can move one of these predators out onto the board. Whether it's a spider that's eating something here, or uh, this uh, grasshopper, which will eat one of the fruits or vegetables, and the giant awesome looking worm, will go into other players' uh, dugout areas here, where they will uh, destroy the soil samples. So the predators are used to kind of like yeah, attack other players in some ways. Now, the end game is indicated uh, when one player has collected eight of these. I mean collected and completed. So basically if they got two of those cherries, they will mark off their victory points on the victory track. And as um, once one player has eight, then the rest of the players complete that round. And then you would score, all the points would already be scored uh, for these. If they have any extras that they haven't scored, they could score those as well. And then you would add the pheromones as well as victory points. And whoever has the most wins the game. So that is the board, quite involved. And so uh, quite cool though looking, but what do you think? Let's start off with some opinions there. Well, there's no doubt that it's a really good looking game for mm -hmm. if you consider it to be a, an all ages sort of family game. Yeah. Um, you know, the figs are kind of, you know, kid oriented, I guess you could say. Um, mm -hmm. But they're cute. They're definitely cute. <laughs> there's a lot of cuteness in the board. Um, I a lot agree. Of, a lot of, yeah, a lot of the, you know, just all the objects and everything. So, and it's clearly designed to be a family-friendly game. Um, yeah. In fact, they have the children's version, which is just for kids, and the rules are very I like the different. various names. <laughs> children's version. Yeah, they yeah. have the uh, intermediary game and mm -hmm. the, what, it, Apprentice? Apprentice, yeah. yes. Yes, yeah, so they're very thematic mm -hmm. in that sense. I like that. Punish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so... Um, what I will say the game about, now we haven't played the children's game, I kind of wish we had just to get a feel for that, but mm -hmm. um, we played it with uh, three and four players, and we did find that it's a, it's quite a bit more complex with four players than with three, so there's quite a bit of a different mm -hmm. feel, mainly because this central area doesn't change in size. They add, mm -hmm. uh, you know, extra areas for each player, um, but that central area doesn't change, so it gets a lot more... Um, traffic-y uh, with four players. And I can imagine with four, uh, five or six players, it would just be crazy. Um, mm -hmm. But um, as a strategy game, um, you know, we're considering the strategy part of the game um, for the apprentice version, mm -hmm. which I guess would be considered, you know, the, the general, you know, everyone plays it all the time version after they know the game. Um, I feel like the strategy is not that deep. It's, it's, it's very basic. You move your ants out. You're, you're doing um, some you know, uh, trying to uh, dominate your territory or cut off your your area from other ants. Um, so there's that kind of strategy. Mm -hmm. And then there's the strategy of when you should uh, learn, use your learning ability, the learning center to get more of these cards um, because you'll run out and then you'll be collecting resources, but you don't know what you're collecting them for. Mm -hmm. um, so balancing, you know, your ants foraging versus getting these cards and satisfying them. And then finally, um, when you're going to reveal your cards, because you don't have to reveal them um, until the game ends, essentially. You don't have to. Um, mm -hmm. And you can keep a maximum of four. So aside from, you know, oh, I have to reveal this one so I can get another one. Um, keeping the secret, you know, uh, prevents people from jumping on you at the end of the game. You know how that often happens in other games where someone's in the lead and then everyone jumps on them. And, and that's what these predators are for yeah. in the game. And you have to use a predator on every round. So players definitely always have that ability and you want to avoid that, obviously. Mm -hmm. So... But um, overall, I think uh, it has some pros and some cons, and I think the the biggest negative is the setup. Like you can see this giant pile of stuff over here. Yeah. We were talking about this, right? Um, mm -hmm. So um, if you don't mind, you know, maybe ten or twelve minutes of setup, right? Organizing everything, yeah. or make sure you put everything in little bags uh, so that you can easily, you know, put them in their correct piles. Um, but um, aside from that, I think it's a very solid game. It certainly doesn't have any, mm -hmm. any problems with the rules or anything or, or, or the game mechanics. Everything works really well. It's obviously been heavily playtested. Uh, and I think it's a good game overall. 
And I would have to agree. Mm-hmm. So uh, the thing is with the game, it's very, very thematic. Art, absolutely spot mm-hmm. on. All the characters, the the figs with the art, with everything else, it works very well together. Color is beautiful. It's really, really well thought out. Now, when it comes to the type of gameplay you like, sometimes you have to kind of switch uh, in your mind about uh, what it is you like about games. If you are someone who loves strategy games as a heavy gamer, this is going to be feeling very simple because it is more of a family style game. I would probably approach it from the mind frame that you're starting from a family game that introduces strategy into it. So if you're starting to teach someone strategy style games, this would be a good way to segue into it. And so because it does incorporate some of that, a little bit of planning, a little bit of, uh, you know, trying to plan your moves with the randomness of the cards you may get with a little bit of choice, a little bit of sabotage. And so it does that very well. I also find too, depending on now, Again, we haven't played the actual children's version, so we couldn't really comment on that. But there is variability in the level of scoring when it comes to the number of players that you have, because Adam has referenced that earlier. You've got your individual player board that is revealed from your starting point, but this center area is going to become more... uh, critical when it comes to the ability to collect resources because the more players you have you're ultimately going to have fewer tiles available to you to choose from and that is going to affect how uh, or when you decide to collect your uh, your special objective cards when you decide to satisfy them can you we found that in the fewer players that we uh, played with this game is that you could buy some time a little bit uh, go exploring venture out more because you can then uh, go to the learning area, collect more cards, and maybe instead of pulling off some of the quick, uh, low scoring ones with maybe one or two resources, maybe try to go for the long game of collecting ones with the higher scoring. So we found that with the fewer players, the spread of scoring was that much greater. Even though you still have chances to catch up if someone completes their age, you know, everyone can still keep scoring if they can, if they can satisfy them. But the spread was, uh, higher. We found that when we played the four player for a bit, four player version. It was a lot more tight. So that could definitely influence how you approach it. So again, brilliant job. We like I, I love it. Mm-hmm. Especially when you think of it as a family style game. Uh I love the entire setup. Even though when you think of oh our our game designs of their elements that are superfluous or or not these ones do really a good job of making every component necessary, especially with the day night tokens. It helps keep track of what you've done mm-hmm. throughout the game because when you have a lot of ants deployed, you know, you're going to be trying to keep in mind, okay, what have I done so far? So every mm-hmm. element is necessary, even though it seems like a lot. It's a heavy game. Yeah. It's uh, it, physically heavy. When you carry yeah. that box, you're like, whoa, I feel this. Yeah. So, but it is meaty and heavy. And so I think if I think of it as a family introduction to strategy, it's really, really well done. So I personally do recommend this game. I really like that. Oh, yeah, I, guess I would we recommend give it again. Yeah. Kudos, you know, yeah. being a, a Canadian producer, French Canadians. Hello. Uh, mm-hmm. Welcome, neighbors. And so we just want to say, hey, we want to support you too. That's really awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. So one last thing I want to mention sure. before we wrap this up is um, the build quality in this game is amazing. Yes. Like your, your ant heal cards are really thick and, and mm-hmm. the ants, you know, and all the figs and all the different cards. Everything is very high mm-hmm. quality in this game. So... Uh, I think you'll be impressed if you got the game and yes. open it up. You'll be like, wow. So whether you can get your hands it's on the, the original the six-player version or the new mm-hmm. one that's uh, coming up soon to be released. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would definitely say give this one a try. It's a good one. Yes, uh, I, I give it a, a very, you know, very energetic two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And so, but you know what? Thank you so much for watching. Come mm-hmm. check out more of our videos. We're going to see you next time. See you later. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.